But anyway, I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord with you. And uh, we're going to continue. Uh, uh, the sermon that uh, God's put on my heart is about the name of Jesus. And we're going to talk about that this morning. I want to give you a few quick announcements if I can. And then um, we're going to take some time to maybe pray before we start here. So um, January uh, 28th, 6 o'clock, there is a men's and uh, boys get together at my house. We're going to have some pizza and wings, play some air hockey, foosball. I mean, you know, just no, uh, just just a time of loving up on each other and having some fun. Okay, so that's January twenty eighth. Also, we have. I know you're going to say, "Are you guys crazy?" We have a night to shine meeting tonight. Now, if you have not, and uh, this is for all people working in night to shine, and. If by chance, because Karen made me do this, if by chance you have your lanyard from last year, Lord willing, which should be black, by the way, um, we need those back, okay? But tonight, the meeting will go from 6 to 7. There are a few changes that we have done. This will be our fourth year doing Night to Shine. If you cannot make tonight's meeting, we will be having another meeting next Sunday night at the Austin Science Building at Lake Erie College. So that's, that's the meetings coming up because I tell you what, uh, Night to Shine is not far away. Real quick teen announcements. We have a Chick-fil-A dinner tonight on the 13th with our teenagers. On the February 29th, there's a men's conference. And the rest are rolling in. We got Beast Feast in there. And also we have a revival service coming with David Ring. So with all that being mentioned, I'd like us to just take some time right now you know, we got, uh, we got a few folks in a hospital. We got some marriages that are hurting. We got some folks that are hurting. You know, Jesus said this place is a house of prayer. No, seriously, folks, I want you to think about that. You know, sometimes you, you sit there and we, we all sit there and say, well, I'm going to church. I can make, mark it off my undo list. Don't come to church today. Let, let, let's go to our God. You got some time right now. Let's just pray. Then, I, then I'll tell you what, I'll open up our time in prayer. But I tell you what, whatever's on your heart, whatever, God, what, whatever God's laid on it, I don't know, maybe it's your country, may, may, maybe it's your family, I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, you put it before Jesus Christ this morning. Our hope, all right? Let's do it. Father in heaven, I I just come before you. Father, thinking that, Lord, I know many of us have brought requests before you this morning. Lord, what do we bring to you? You tell us in your word that the whole conclusion of the matter is fear God and obey his commandments. This is a whole duty of man. God, I'm asking you this morning that, Father, Lord, we seek the spiritual more than the physical. That, Father, Lord, this morning... Father, as we sit there and we list all the things that we, and and they're important to us, Lord, and I know you care. But more importantly, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things shall be added to you. Father, you take care of the basics. I praise you, Lord, for that. But this morning, I pray that we take care of the priority that you have for our lives. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This time, we're going to have a short video. And uh, you sit back, they'll adjust the lights. 
No popcorn this morning, so you'll just have to hang in there, all right? Here we go. Dear God, thank you for your goodness. Lord, I know you want me to be blessed and happy. And that's why, God, I pray you, please, let me have this Corvette I've been looking at. I really like it. And God, if it be your will, please make it cherry red. Amen. Lord, I'm single. And I'd really like to find that special someone. I kind of thought you'd have this problem figured out by now. Anyway, now is the time, Lord. Make it happen. Bring me a man. Lord, I know it is your desire to make your children happy. And I've got a situation here. Um... All of my neighbors have gotten in-ground pools. I'm the only one on the block that doesn't have one. God, you can do better than this. As you know, Lord, I just released my first album, and it's not getting the kind of attention I hoped for. God, I know that you are capable of anything. You're all-powerful. So please, Lord... Make my album trend. Make it trend, Lord, make it trend. Ignite social media with your holy fire so that I may be glorified in all I do. Amen. What's going on? Why isn't this working? Come on! I want this car! God, give it to me! Right now! Hello? (laughs) Hello? I don't understand! Where's my pool? Why is this not working? What is wrong with this thing? God, what are you doing? I want this. What is going on? I can't look it out in front of my friend. Are you kidding me? Come on, God. What am I supposed to do? Are you listening to me? Give me a break here. Uh, this is stupid. Come oh, on. What is the matter? God, I want my car. Uh, God, are you even listening to me? God, are you even listening to me? Now, see, I would have shook the machine because I usually try to get the candy out. You know, I mean, I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? Come on, tell the truth, right, baby? Usually shake that machine. Hopefully that two pieces of candy come out of the pool and the car. You know what I'm saying? All right. We started this year, we talked about getting out of your rut. We also talked about last week about lame man walking, talking about how many of us are spiritually, emotionally, besides physically lame. This week... Where last week we saw that Peter said, listen, I don't got any ching. I don't got any money. I don't got no silver or gold to give to you. But what I give to you, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we talked about how the word name in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that this has a characteristic, very important, and it was related to the power of Jesus. So it comes up real quick during this praying, praying the name of Jesus. You think about it. We always say, in Jesus' name. Look at, Matthew, or look at uh, John chapter 14. I want you to read this verse with me. In John 14, it says, Most assuredly, verse 12, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And then he says this, Whatever you ask in my name, underline my name, all right? 
Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Folks, in the name of Jesus is the most important name during our prayer. But let me ask you something. Y'all have done it, and sometimes you get no answer. Come on, true? You sit there and you prayed it, but you got no answer. Why? No? May not be the answer. May not be the reason. I want you to think about what it is. The question comes up, very importantly, is, are you asking correctly? You know, forgery is the unauthorized use of a name or identity for personal benefit or privilege. I want to repeat that to you. In other words, forgery, it's the unauthorized use. It's saying, listen, I'm going to use somebody's name for a personal benefit so I can sit there and get something out of it. Now, many Christians today are spiritual forgerers. All right? Now, I know my wife, she freaks out about signing my name. I say all the time, sign my name. How many, how many wives will not sign their name? Well, look at her spouse's name. Wow. See, husbands watch. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Imagine that. I have no problem with that. But the point of it is, is there are people today that are spiritual forgerers. You say, what are you talking about? Many people sit there and claim the name of Jesus Christ, but they really understand what it means. The name of Jesus isn't something that's a little little Aladdin lamp that you're supposed to sit there and rub and hopefully it comes out. The name of Jesus has power. But the question is, are you connected to the power? That's the question. You know, today we've grown up in a society, well, you know what, I expect it now. I expect it now. Even one of our people sit there and say, well, he said no. It doesn't mean he said no. The question is, are you a spiritual forgerer. First thing I want to look at is this, and we're going to go throughout the Bible today, so just hang on. Are we using the name of Jesus legally, or are we using it illegally? I want you to think about that. Are you and I, when we go to pray, actually using the name Jesus in the correct way? The Bible says this in 1 Timothy 2.5. It says, there is one what? God. And what, there is one God, one mediator between God and man. That mediator is who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has the position. Jesus Christ has the power. Jesus Christ is who God answers prayer through. He doesn't answer prayer because Stony Drain got on his hands and knees and prayed. The prayer was answered because it went through the name of Jesus Christ. Because he is not only the mediator. We always get the idea that Jesus is the mediator. He's up in heaven and he's sitting there saying, well, listen, I tell you what, that Bill Potter guy, he really messed up today. His wife can testify to this, okay? Oh, I tell you, he boo. But Lord, I, you got to look at me because I have his righteousness. There's truth to that. But the other truth is, is you got to understand that the spiritual warfare that happens in our lives goes through Jesus Christ in the name. You look in John chapter 14 while you're still there. Go over to uh, chapter uh, 15, verse 5. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Go to chapter 16. Look at verse 23. And that day, you're going to ask me nothing. But most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. In whose name? The Father's name says he will give you. Until now, you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy will be full. You know what? How many's ever been a power of attorney? Come on. When you're a power of attorney, especially if you have, okay, health, okay, you have legal, you have uh, attorney, you're a power of attorney like I was, let's say, for my mom, okay? 
You're in charge to handle their estate and their interest. I remember when I talked to Caroline's mom, I call her mom. And I sit there, and mom says, you better sit there and make sure you do what I want you to do. You hear what I'm saying? And the point is, is that many times God is saying, listen, I'm giving you authority, but your authority is based on you doing what I want you to do. Now that comes into a dilemma there, right at the point right there. God is saying, I'll give you authorization if I authorize the use. Notice in John chapter 11, God never turns down the son. This is important. Go to, go to John chapter 11 and verse 39 through 42. And I want to read this real quick. This is a story of Lazarus where Jesus sit there. Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept and he sits there and he looks and he says, you know what? He looks at the crowd. He knows he's going to raise them from the dead. But he sits there and he just emotionally cries. His heart is broke. Because why? He sees Mary and Martha and he sees how upset they are. But in verse 38, Jesus was groaning in himself. That word groaning, his heart's just heavy. Came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And then he says, Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he's been dead four days. And Jesus said, did I not say to you that you would believe you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, underline this verse, Father, I thank you that you have what? Heard me. And I know that you, what? So, is that sometimes? Always? Hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Folks, you can use the name of Jesus, but you better be using it in the authorized way. You better be using it in the name that comes along because you know that person. A lot of people that sit there and call Jesus are using that name illegally. This point two that I want to make is, this is something that is not talked about much. When I was growing up in the 70s, I was heavily indoctrinated into legalism, okay? That's where basically you were a good Christian and you were doing the Lord's will. If you came to church Sunday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night, you know, you didn't chew, you didn't go with the girls that would do, you know, you'd sit there and burn Christian albums, or not Christian albums, uh, you know, ACDC, you know, uh, you'd sit there and bury TVs in the back. I'm, I'm serious. I belonged to a church that we'd bury TVs. Okay? All right? And your Christianity or your rating with God was based on how people viewed you based on rules and regulations. You couldn't dance. You couldn't this. You could, oh, heaven forbid you have a smile on your face. You're fried baked or extra crispy the colonel's way. Okay? But you know what I found out? is God isn't so much concerned about the sets of rules. He's concerned about wanting him to be Lord of your life. Because what this means is not some outward show that you're keeping a bunch of rules. What this is saying is, you know what? I want God to be in charge of every aspect. In the book of Romans, this really explains it. I want you to see this. But... Go with me to Romans chapter 14, verse 8 and 9. But before that, in Luke 6, 46, Jesus says this. Now, this text is actually from the Sermon on the Mount, okay? It's found in Matthew 6. It's also found in Luke 6. But he says this. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? See, when you and I accepted Jesus Christ, our life belongs to God. All right? This is not a spiritual buffet. All right? I love buffets. I told you about rookie mistakes when I see people getting lettuce and macaroni salad when there's steak in the other part of the buffet. Amen? I, I see people make rookie mistakes and they go for that, 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 that rice pudding when in reality there's carrot cake there. You know what I'm saying? 
There, there's chocolate cake. There's, there's pies galore. I see rookie mistakes when it comes to a buffet. But as Christians, sometimes we go through and we say, well, I want this part of the Lord, but I don't want this part of the Lord. And I want this part of the Lord, but I don't want him controlling this part. You know what? I don't mind if God creeps into this area, but I'm not willing to do this. And you know what? I'm willing to maybe dedicate this much time to the Lord, but you know what? You can forget it if you expect me to sit there and... And give him so much, you know, because I need everything because I earn it all. Christianity, for you to get to the power line of God, you cannot be going through a spiritual buffet. Because that's not how it works. Matter of fact, the Roman says it very specifically. He says, for if we live, we live to the Lord. Do you hear me? If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died, rose, and lived again, that he might be, what? The Lord of both the dead and... Folks, Jesus Christ, we have bought this thing. Oh, just accept Jesus Christ in your life, and you can live like the devil. Sorry. That's not what the New Testament church believed. I, I, it almost goes back to the 70s when there was this easy believism caught on. Well, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. For your visitors here, I don't want to scare you to death. Because the Bible says, these things have I written unto you, believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have everlasting life. But what I'm trying to say is that there are many people that even the demons sit there and believe, but they ain't going to heaven. When Jesus Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ, there is some type of change that will take time, maybe happen faster for others, but he will not leave you where he paid for you. Notice this in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. It says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That means I'm going to have to cut down on my Coca-Colas a little bit, okay? All right? Whom you have from God, okay. That body you got, that's from God. You say, man, couldn't he have done a little bit better? You know how y'all feel, all right? And you are not your what? Own. Freeze. You are not your own. Now, see, that's where it all comes, because that goes back to that spiritual buffet. I want this from God, but I don't want this. And then you sit there and say, you'll pray in Jesus' name. And Jesus says, listen, I ain't doing a thing. For me and you to get into where Jesus answers our prayers, there has to be submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. For you were bought with a price. You were on the slave market of sin. I was on the slave market of sin. All right? We were bought with a price. This says, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are what? God's. This is a clear teaching, folks, that you know what? So why? Why? Why in the world if this is a case? You know what? We were bought with a price. Problem is, we still think we own ourselves. And if you own yourselves, why don't you pray to yourself? No, seriously. If you, if you own yourselves, why don't you close the prayer with in Stoney's name or in Pete's name or in Martha's name or whatever's name? Because the Bible says, if you are not praying in in the name of Jesus Christ, okay? And this name is not something that's just supposed to be thrown out like it's, you know what? We sit there and we get on people about, you know, you should not take the Lord's name in vain. What's the difference between us who take it illegitimate when we go to pray? Do you hear me? Boys, I love you. Boys, boys, boys. Nathan, I love you, but I need you quiet, okay? All right? They're very good young men. I appreciate them very much. Probably comparing notes on the sermon. (laughs) I know these guys well. (laughs) All right, there we go. So anyway, why in the world don't we do those things? Because the truth of it is, is that, you know what? 
we get up in the morning, we wonder what the other six wonders of the world is, and Jesus is not the Lord of our life. It's something that's not taught much anymore. It's something that's, you know, sit there and we're taught, well, we can have part of this, but we can't, don't have to take all this. Listen, when you and I accepted Jesus Christ, and if we want to be disciples of Jesus Christ, we have to make a commitment for full. Let me show you what else it says. Let's, let's look at this in Colossians. Colossians 3.17 says this. It says, And whatever you do, okay, in word or deed, do all. What's that say? All. Can y'all repeat that with me? All. In the what? Name. The name. How many times have I given you verses today and it said, In the name. Because that name is a legitimate name. That name has a characteristic. We learned last week that that name has some backing. We learned that, you know what? You and I, if we want to get to the power line of God, we have to surrender to him. It's not popular. Now notice what it says. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, what's that mean? What's that mean? Look at it. Whatever you do in word or deed, that means every aspect of your life. Every aspect of your life. Now, go with me to Colossians chapter 3. I want you to take a look at this real quick. In Colossians 3, I want you to notice when he sits there and talks about this. My pages are sticking together, guys. I apologize. In Colossians 3, he says this. In verse 17, he says, Whatever you do, do in word or deed, and all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God. Then he says, Wives, submit. Husbands, love. Children, obey. Workers. In verse uh, 23, serve the Lord Jesus Christ. People in charge, masters in chapter 4, give your bondservants what is just and fair. The point of it is, it runs every aspect of your life. And right now, many of us only do not want the full aspect of Jesus Christ in our life. And then we sit there and we're at the vending machine and we're hitting it saying, you know what, we're more worried about the physical than we are the spiritual. Our deacons right now, we're going through a book called Pray Big. Pray Big. By Alistair Begg. And our goal is, you know what? Where is God taking? Where do we need to find out what God wants this church to be doing? What God wants our families to be doing? We need to sit there and find out, not create a bunch of things, but find out what God wants us to do. You and I need to find out what God wants us to do. Aren't you tired of going and doing the same stupid things over and over again? Aren't you tired? Why don't you just go, you know, wham, 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 beat your head against the wall. But the truth of it is, is we love something more than we love Jesus. Now, isn't it the truth? Come on. Like I always say, tell the truth, shame the devil. Because that's what it comes down to it. You say, Pastor, normally you're a lot more funnier. Guys, I'll tell jokes if you listen. But this is the word of God, and it's telling us. And I tell you, it smacked me around the room this week. I was going through, I told you, when you pray, write down things in your Bible when God answers prayer. You know, I was looking through. I had a very stagnant 2019. Everything rises and falls on leadership in this church. And if I'm not up to speed, then how can I expect you guys to be? If I'm failing, I get letters sometimes that say, you know, you you, you bring out things too transparently. I don't care. Find another church if you don't like it. Folks, I'm bringing it out for this reason. I failed the Lord in my prayer life. I'm ashamed. Because I was sitting there doing it the wrong way. 
You can spend as much time as a Pharisee and you could sit there and beat your, uh, or, or you could be like the, 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 the sinner that sit there and beat his hands on his chest. You know what? You got to do it God's way. You want some, you're sitting there saying, why don't I get prayers answered in my life? Why isn't God moving? Why is God doing something in someone else's life? Why is God doing these things? Because we're not channeled in. I ain't being there anymore. Like I said, I lost track last year. I lost my focus. You ever lose focus? It shouldn't happen with your leadership, but sometimes it does. But I'm here to tell you that we need to refocus. Sam, have a seat. Thank you. Sorry, I apologize there. Or I don't apologize, guys. Thank you. Now, I want to go to this next part. Point three. What can we expect when we pray in the name of Jesus? What can we expect when we pray in the name of Jesus? I want you to look at this. Go with me to Luke 10, verse 18 through 20. Now, some of you are going to sit there and say, well, wait a minute, this is the time of the apostles. It had nothing. It's amazing how we love to cherry pick scripture. Okay? I want you to go to Luke chapter 10. I want you to look through 18, verse 20, and I want you to look at this, okay? It says this, I saw Satan falling like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Thank you, brother. Okay? Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather because your names are written in heaven. You know what? Very important point here. God wants to address the spiritual in our life. You know, I look at our prayer list, and I don't want to knock it, but you go down our Wednesday night prayer list. May God heal this person. May God heal this person. This person needs a new job. This person needs this. Does God care that you need a job? Yes, he does. Does God care that you... You know what But God primary says? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of the God. How many times do we ask for spiritual help? How many times do we sit there and say, God, I need you? See, God's going to take care of the physical needs, folks. He says he sits there and he clothes, he, he sits there and he makes the birds make sure that they're fed. But you know what the problem is, is we concentrate so much on what I physically need when we're not looking at the things that are of heaven, of the spiritual. That's what God is asking. That's what God is telling us. You know, many times, like guys, listen to me right here. Many of the problems you and I face, majority are demonic. And I tell you what, in some of our marriages, I get people come to me at counseling. You know what? I have, I can't get along. Our personalities clash. You know what? No, here's the problem. Satan has found an edge into your marriage. He sit there and basically he's amped up your guys' personality. Okay, and he has blown it bigger than what it really is. And in reality, y'all sitting there, sitting there calling it quits over nothing. You ever think about that? Satan sits there. He knows your weakness. He knows how to play you folks. And demons take a simple situation and they magnify it so they make it worse. It's amazing to me what we're willing to give up on. Our church, the Lord's church, we need to refocus. We need to refocus. In Acts chapter 19, I want to close with this. The name of Jesus, what does the name of Jesus give you? It gives you power in the spiritual realm. How? If you and I surrender to the Lord. Every aspect, not just part, every aspect. And Acts chapter 19 is a little bit of a funny story. Now, in verse 11, it says, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish 
chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit, I want you to look at this, answered and said this, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? (laughs) You know, you better be careful about calling the name of Jesus because I tell you what, the devil may be getting all over your case. And look what ends up happening. Then the man in whom the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed them against them. So they fled out of their house naked and wounded. Get the picture. These guys sit there and say, you know what? We calling, uh, we calling you out. We're exercising you demon in the name of the Paul who worships Jesus Christ. And they sit there and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, I know Paul, the demon says. I know Jesus. But you seven, I don't have a clue who you all are. And he gets ugly on all of them. Rips off their clothes. Does a little pile driving. Okay? Worldwide wrestling confederation. Throws them out of the building. Why? Because they didn't know the name of Jesus. Some of the problems that you're experiencing in your life is because, you know what? You're spiritually forging Jesus' name. You say, I'm saved. I get it. But just because you're saved does not give you that you are like a kid and think you can sit there and get everything off the Christmas Sears book wish list. It don't work that way. The Bible says, and I've given you over nine verses that says when you identify with God in the name, in the name, in the power, by submitting to God, not just part, but whole. And this is where the problem comes in. Who can do it? See, God wants, not just today for the, it's 1115, all right? He didn't just want Sunday morning from 9 to 12. He's expecting today, he's expecting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you say, nobody's perfect. I get it. Trust me. You're looking at a full old creature. I'm the one that sit there, just sit there and confess that I, I, I dropped the ball. But the point I'm trying to make to you is this. That is what our goal to be shooting for is. Jesus knows what we're made of. He made us. He knows that we're frail. But folks, many of us are not willing to even open those dark areas. How many got some closets in your room house you just ain't going to open? Yeah, I know what you're talking about, Xavier. I know what you're talking about. You open them up, and I tell you, they'll, you'll sit there, and you'll be buried alive. You go down to one in my basement, I swear, I could be on that show. What is that show where hoarders, hoarders, I could be on that show. You're walking through, and like things could fall on you. This is down in my basement, all right? I mean, it's bad. There's certain areas you all don't want God to get into, but you know what? You cannot legitimately expect God to answer your prayers until you're willing to sit there and say, you know what, I'm willing to give him my life. Your life and my life is not our own. We were bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul's saying here. Guys, I love you this morning. I love you. and I'm bringing this to you because... I can't give you the, I wish there was an easier way, but there's not. It's obedience to the word of God to every aspect. And you know, I one time led a guy to the Lord, and I remember I sit there and I started him in Matthew. This was when I was about 20 years old. And he came in Matthew, so he said, well, what do you do when you get, well, what's this mean? And I sit there and said, well, you know, we were in Matthews, and, and, and it happened, it came up on the word tithing. And I sit there and said, well, this. He says, well, good, I'll do that. He did it. Then he came back, and he says, what's it mean on this area about, and I said, well, the Bible talks about that as Christians, we are supposed to be sharing the gospel. And he says, okay, I'll do it. See, when, the point of it is, is when God sits there and shows you something, you do it. <laughs> it's not a time for you to sit there and debate him. 
God doesn't give you his full revelation at one time. He sits there and says, here, I need you to be faithful in this area, and then you go, and then, hey, I'm going to do this, and then I'll do it. That's what God's talking about. The problem what me and you have is we sit there and pick and choose, and we say, well, wait a minute, eh, it's getting a little too close. I, I don't want to do that one because it costs. But Jesus says a life is not your own. That's what you and I need to decide this morning. With every head bowed, every eye closed. <laughs> we're going to have another time of just praying, and then we're going to dismiss the service. So the musicians are going to come up, but there's going to be no invitation to come forward. The invitation to this morning, the last two weeks we did invitations come forward. This morning I want you to do an invitation right where you're at. I don't know what your situation is, but I can't be the only one that was doing it wrong. God cares for your needs, guys. But it's about time we start looking at what God wants. Because when we look at life, it all comes down to is you've got to learn to love God because that's what we're going to be doing after when we go to heaven. It's amazing how God fits all the extras into. Loving your family, work, it's all related. Worship, it can be work. Worship can be coaching a team. Worship is reading your word, word, the word of God. This morning with every head bowed, let's just pray. Ask God to penetrate your heart. And maybe there's something that you don't want to give up, but you're willing to say, Lord, I'm willing to do it this morning. every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to ask anybody, this morning, is there anyone who wants to put their hand up and sit there and say, Lord, I want you to know that I'm taking away this one area I know that's a hindrance. Is there anyone there this morning? Anyone this morning? Amen. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. Praise the Lord. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. You put it down in the front there too. Amen. I see your hand back there. Yes, I do. Amen. Thank you. But you know what? I praise the Lord because you know what? I know where you are. But this is what you're going to do tomorrow. Or this is what you're going to start today, should I say. When you get up in the morning, you're going to ask God, say, God, I, you know, I have a problem in this area. I need you to live through me. And then I want you to take one verse that you can find in the Bible your Bible doesn't have a concordance, I want you to sit there and use your smartphone and look up a, a verse or two that sits there and deals with that area that you need help in overcoming. And the Bible says, these words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He loves you. He's, n- he's not going to let you stay where you're at. Kicking and dragging, he's going to get you there. But isn't it much easier to yield to him? Praise the Lord for you all this morning. Father, I pray that you'd be at these folks. Father, so many hands. Oh, Father, Lord, they've been sifted. Now they need strengthened. Father, you said that you prayed that Peter, his faith would not falter. And I'm praying this morning that you help them. Encourage them. Help them this week, Father, Lord, to live up to, Lord, what you've called them to do in their lives. And I want to thank you for every man and woman and and young person that's here today that, Father, you brought them out. And I'm asking as they go home that you give them safety on the roads. Father, Lord, let nothing happen to them. Just protect them. And help them remember this day has been given to you or given to them by you. 
that when they look at the food on their plate, that they're thankful. When they think about that water and the hot shower, that they're thankful. We look at the smiles of our children and our grandchildren, and maybe even sometimes the the annoying thing of hearing someone snore. We need to thank God for that because you know what? That person may not always be with us. Life's a gift, and Lord, I'm asking you, help us live it according to your will. Thank you, and bless this time. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may stand up. I love you, Father.